Greetings, I'm John Spirit, we have Microminer Sizen, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. And also part 2 of my integrated dynamics tutorial. We'll need a fluid level emitter and 5 normal level emitters, and we'll just stack them up like so. And slap redstone readers on all of them. These bottom 3 level emitters will filter on uraninite ore, uraninite dust, and pulsating dust. I want a Microminer to be sent when there are insufficient pulsating dusts in the system but not when there is uraninite dust or uraninite ore in the system. So when every single one of these is off, a microminer should be sent. However, due to the length of time it takes my ore processing system to work, there may be a period of time where uraninite ore is not in the system, but neither is uraninite dust, during which a microminer will be sent yet again. That's why I'm going to be using a delayer from Integrated Dynamics. Every operation of the delayer, the delayer adds the value, the current value of the variable card in its slot to a list. A list of a certain length. For example, in this case, 4. Let's turn this lever on and watch True slowly fill up the list. Let's imagine that this is what happened when Uraninite Ore entered the system. This list became full of true values. Now let's say that the uraninite ore leaves the system, but there's no uraninite dust. This will slowly fill up with false values, but for a while it'll have at least one true value inside of it. So I'm going to make an ore gate, where if there is uraninite ore in the system, or there has been uraninite ore in the system in recent time, a microminer will not send. So if every single one of these is off, then all of these values will be true. Assuming I use the redstone low card, which is true if the redstone signal is off. If the uraninite ore has been off for a long time, and so has uraninite dust, then this display panel will be full of true. But if it has even a single false, implying that uraninite ore has been in the system recently, then a microminer should not be sent. To make that work, I'm going to take a list variable, that is this list variable right here, Use this contains operator to check if it contains a false variable, which will return true if it contains a false variable. Not that, so that it will return false if there's a false variable. And then and that final result with all these three level emitters. So even if every single one of them is off and all three of these are true, if this contains even a single false, the operations I do to it will also return false and a microminer will not be sent, because the AND gate consisting of all four, including the, the, the output of the list operator, will be false. Let's start making variables and naming them. The variable for the pulsating dust level emitter, we will call insufficient pulsating dust, because it'll be true when there's not enough pulsating dust. This variable will be true if there's no uraninite dust, and this variable will be true if there's no uraninite ore. We're going to change our tune slightly and use a NOT gate to create a variable that is true if there is uraninite ore in the system. And then we'll slap it in the delayer, and every 5 seconds it'll add one false value to the list. If the list is full of falses, that means no uraninite ore has been in the system in the last 30 seconds. But if the list contains even one true, then uraninite ore has been in the system. This list will be called uraninite ore checks. We'll create a variable card with the boolean value true, and name it true because it'll be easier to read. And then we'll check in the list if there is a true inside. And then name it the very long name, uraninite ore has been in system. I'll negate uraninite ore has been in system into no recent uraninite ore, and then and them into no uraninite ore at all. And then and no uraninite dust and no uraninite ore at all into no uraninite anything. And if there's no uraninite anything and insufficient pulsating dust, send the first microminer for pulsating. Now to do the same thing with salt ore, salt, and 64 buckets of chlorine. You may be wondering why I did 30 seconds. Well, I did some calculations, and at HV, it will take about 14.75 seconds for uraninite ore to pass through the system and make uraninite dust, assuming that item conduits transfer instantly, and so do all of the... Greg Tech covers. However, it won't be that bad. To recap, we have no salt ore, this is true, but this delayer checks if we have had salt ore, and this checks if salt ore checks has had any salt ore, and if it hasn't, which means it's false, then this is true that there has been no recent salt ore, 
And if there's been no recent salt ore and no salt ore, there's been no salt ore at all. And if there's been no salt ore at all and no salt, then there's no salt anything. And if there's no salt anything and insufficient chlorine, then we should send the tier 1 microminer for chlorine. I've reorganized my variables store to make a little more sense and hold more things in case I need to perform more checks. For example, I'll need to do one for titanium soon. Here's the order. There's no uranium ore. There's a uranium ore checks. This checks if uranium ore has been in system. <clears throat> this checks if there's been no recent uranium ore. This says there's no uranium ore at all. This says there's no uranium dust. This says there's no uranium anything. This says there's insufficient pulsating dust. And finally, this says that we should send the first microminer for pulsating dust. I realize I've said uranium many times, but of course I obviously mean uraninite. I will or these two together so that if either is true, then I'll send the microminer. Now, how will I send the microminer using this system? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is some checks. Right now, this is set to extract never active. Let's partition a storage bus on this chest to hold uraninite ore and salt ore, which means that if I put uraninite ore into this steel chest, this level emitter should turn on. If I put salt ore into this chest, the hope is that both these level emitters will turn on and this will set to false. Yes! Yes, it has set to false. Now, if I remove uraninite ore, let's see how long it takes to set back to true. It looks like it hasn't done so yet. It's taking a good long while. And it finally set back to true. Yes, thank goodness, I am glad this system works. Alright, for those of you who came from the Integrated Dynamics Mod Spotlight, that's the end of this Integrated Dynamics example. I know it was heavy. It gets more complicated. If you want me to try and automate something using Integrated Dynamics, let me know in the comments and I might actually try to do it. Not for Omnifactory, just as a project that I'll put on video so that people can see more examples of automating things using Integrated Dynamics. Also, please let me know if I either move too slow or move too fast. Teaching programming is a complicated thing. Or if I repeated myself too many times, because I definitely went through the whole process at least thrice. But anyway, that's it for all my questions for you Integrated Dynamics viewers. For now, let's get back to Omnifactory. Now remember, sending out microminers like this is not something you need to do to do Omnifactory well. It's just a project I have set for myself to passively send things. I have a principle. If I can get the ore by any other method than coins, I will get the ore that way. So, because I can now get salt ore from tier 1 microminers, I should never buy it with coins again, according to my principle. For the next 40 seconds, I'm going to soapbox about coins, but you should currently see a timestamp in this clip for you to skip past the soapbox if you don't want to hear it. Coins are definitely something that really help you throughout the pack, especially when you're in a tight spot. But at the same time, coins were never meant to be the end-all be-all for obtaining any resources. Some may say there are certain ores you should just buy with coins up until you get the creative portable tank, because the tank will make those coin ore recipes obsolete. But the creative portable tank was not originally an infinite resource. That's why I say, if there's any point in this pack where you need a lot of a certain resource, but it is better to get it with coins than any other method given to you, that that goes against the philosophy of the pack. But I'm not Damien, nor am I Exa or any of the current developers of this pack. So don't mind me. This is the timestamp where the soapbox is over. Alright, we're going to check the variable that when true tells us to send a microminer, and put it into this redstone writer. Right now, it's not emitting a redstone signal because the condition to do it is false. I've set this ender IO conduit to extract only when there's a signal, and I've put iron into this interface to test if it's going to work. If 30 seconds after I move this uraninite ore from the steel chest, iron starts flowing into this chest, then, we, then, this, then the system is working. It's set to true, and iron is flowing in. Perfect. But it instantly set to false when I put uraninite ore back in the chest, which is what I wanted. Now I'll set a limited item filter on chests, microminers, and quantum flux. Now for our next trick, we have to, you know, actually automate pulsating crystals. So that we can get that quantum flux. Pulsating iron is used for something else, enriched aqua to dust. But for now, I'm just going to shove pulsating iron directly into an autoclave. As I would rather not fill the autoclave or the fluid extractor that's creating pulsating iron to the brim, I'm going to use an interface and a crafting card. This crafting pattern will use one diamond, one iron, and one pulsating dust, and an alloy smelter, a fluid extractor, and an autoclave, with the alloy smelter auto-outputting to the fluid extractor and the fluid extractor auto-outputting to the autoclave. Let's set those. One quick note, when I was getting paper to turn my Z-Logic controller into an advanced item filter, I discovered that my sugarcane farm had stopped working. This is because they recently fixed an exploit 
where redstone conduits would just automatically update SNAD without requiring a redstone clock. Now they do require a redstone clock, so I just use the timer that I was using for my old basin setup over here. Now this interface with this crafting pattern will point up into a chest. I'll put a limited item filter on this alloy smelter with pulsating dust and iron, and filter this autoclave on diamonds. And then if I throw diamonds, pulsating dust, and iron into this chest, they should all get extracted into their relevant places, and we should watch this pulsating iron turn into pulsating iron fluid and get autoclaved into pulsating crystals. And then pulsating crystals will get shoved into this interface. Now we've got our crafting pattern, and we'll make sure to storage bus partition for pulsating crystals. And now if I request pulsating crystals with this ME interface, we should see these machines running because of the crafting card. And indeed, it has worked. This system is working great. To supply extraterrestrial matter, I have separated the three matters from the main system of drawers for DML, and I've hooked up a, a drawer controller to them, and now a partition storage bus. To supply extraterrestrial matter to this ME interface, we'll partition quantum flux into this storage bus, and store, I don't know, 16 of it in the network. Now that we have 17, this autocrafter isn't running anymore, and pulsating crystals are being resupplied into the ME interface. And then, since I don't have a proper tree farm yet, I'm just going to shove 32 chests into this input bus. Really, I should have 1,562 according to my calculations, but I don't want to do that. I'm actually thinking of installing Steve's carts so that I can make a Steve's carts tree farm, but I think the Ender.io farmer is supposed to be a little more cost-efficient and lag-efficient, so I might just use that instead. If you want to see a Botania-based tree farm that was really fun to make, you can check out my modern Skyblock Super Short series. Ah, oh, I loved that. This system is now armed and dangerous. However, I do need to get rid of all these other silly ores. Most of them, such as the Moon Turf, the Galena, the Rutile, and the Nickel, I'm going to put straight into my ore processing system. The Redstone, the Cassiterite, the Dense Iron Ore, and the Dilithium Ore I will temporarily put into an ME drive. This 4K ME storage cell will be partitioned on ores, the four ores I mentioned. Fun fact, you can shift-click filters into a cell workbench. Hmm, this drive won't be able to hold all those ores forever. I'm sure I'll upgrade it eventually, it's not that expensive. The rest of these I'll shove into the storage bus, and then I'll slap 15 extract speed upgrades onto an item conduit so it can pull out of the micro miner very, very fast. Also, just an extract always on black and insert directly into the ME interface. And now, if all goes well, when I set this item conduit to extract always active, if either the salt ore or the uraninite ore gets extracted, a micro miner should be sent into this projector. They've gotten extracted first, and so we should expect this to turn true in a moment, and when it does, I'll let you know. Okay, it's true. Let's see if the micro miner is running. Yes! Yes, it is! Now, a second set of steel plated micro miner and quantum flux has been added to the input bus. A third might get added as well. Yes, while the ores were getting extracted from the output bus, the required salt ore and uraninite ore did not enter the system fast enough for the micro-reverse projector to realize that there was space in the output bus and then start the recipe again. So I unfortunately used up three micro-miners, but that's okay because I'm making them passively, and the only thing I'm missing is quartzite and brass, which we'll be fixing very soon. Meanwhile, my project will be to figure out what to do with all of these items. Nickel I will immediately smelt by partitioning it into this storage bus and giving Nickel a home in another compacting drawer. Since I put Nickel with my other metals over there and not with these drawers, and yet I'm multi-smelting the Nickel, well it's not going into these drawers, so I'm going to stick it into interface by increasing the priority that items go into this drawer controller, and then giving it a priority of zero. Now if I add Nickel to this massive filter, Nickel should start flowing straight in from this chest. Cobalt and Platinum I'll add to this storage bus and stick into these basic drawers, which I've installed a tier 5 storage upgrade to. And of course, adding them to the ever-growing filter. And then I'm going to get oodles of stacks of Rutile dust, which I'll need for absolutely enormous amounts of titanium, to be fair. So I'll give Rutile his own drawer. One minor problem. The integrated dynamic system is not working as well as I thought it would. And I believe the reason is that the moment uraninite dust goes into this steel chest, even though it's detected for a moment by this system, it immediately disappears and goes into the multi-smelter, and there's a gap between when the uraninite dust gets pulled out and the pulsating dust gets pushed into the drawer, and especially a longer gap before the full pulsating dust amount is given. The obvious solution to this problem is to make a second delayer for the uraninite dust, but I don't want to do that. Or I can ore the uraninite dust and the uraninite ore into a single uraninite stuff and use a delayer on that list with a smaller, with a larger capacity and a smaller number of ticks per operation. But this is really fast. 
So the list would be very long and start to get laggy, possibly. So what I'm going to do is rely with hope on the fact that when the pulsating dust goes below 128, it'll almost immediately shoot up after the first uraninite dust enters the drawer. But just to be absolutely certain, I'm increasing the time before the system decides that it should send the microminer because there's no uraninite ore, nor has there been any uraninite ore. You may ask, what if the uraninite ore has finished processing, but this multi-smelter is doing something other than uraninite dust, and so the uraninite dust starts filling up this chest? Well, I think that's fine because... The multi-smelter works fast enough that while the uraninite dust is being extracted into the multi-smelter, it's probably also being extracted from the output bus at the same time, so there still be uraninite dust in these sealed chests by the, same, by the time the pulsating dust gets into this drawer to push it over 128. Now this might not work, but hey, if it doesn't, at least I had fun creating this system. Now it's worth noting that these mace raiders are very slow. I mean, they're pretty fast, but compared to everything I'm getting from microminers, they're not fast enough. But higher tier mace readers would use a lot more power. And I'm actually using almost two-thirds of my power output now that the ore processing is running, which is a lot. However, as soon as I get signalum, I plan to do a large-scale expansion of my power system. For galena processing, you'll note that purified galena ore is going into the steel chest just like I wanted it to. Sulfur dust is definitely going to get trashed. Moon dust will get sent into the filter into the system. I'll slap it on the storage bus and give it a home with some of these other dusts. Purified Galena will get a temporary home in a basic drawer of its own, which it'll share with Sphalerite eventually. And it'll eventually enable me to get tiny piles of indium dust. Since that's pretty much all the processing I need to do, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll use Rutile Dust to set up the Titanium Tetrachloride Loop, which will get us lots of titanium. And then we'll start working toward the Titanium Plated Microminer, which really isn't that bad. Except that automating the extended crafting table for the microminers is not really within our reach at this time, unless we do something very silly. Since I am not planning to do anything extremely silly, we will not do this yet, but we will automate almost all of the parts, if not every single part. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.